In this video, we are going to learn how to accept connections on the server and how to connect on the client. So first, let's look at how to accept connections on the server. We've set our socket to a listening state where we are listening for new connections. In order to accept connections, though, we actually have to call a function called accept. Inside of our socket header, let's create a new function for accepting a connection. Now, accept will reference in a socket for where to store this new socket. Let's go down and generate the definition. So we're going to create a socket handle for our accepted connection handle. And we're going to call accept. And accept takes in, the first argument is the handle on the socket that we're listening on. So we'll just pass in handle. The next two are actually optional. We will probably look at these in the next tutorial, but what these are for is you can actually get information about that new connection, like their IP, the port that they connected on, and things like that here. But we're just going to pass in null pointer, null pointer right here. To check if the accepting of a new connection was successful, we will check if the accepted connection handle is invalid socket. If it is invalid socket, then something went wrong. We can get the last error with WSA get last error. Otherwise, what we will do is we will say out socket equals, we'll call the socket constructor, where we can pass in our internet protocol version, which for now will just be version four. And then we will pass in the accepted connection hand. And lastly, we will return success. Now, since we are using blocking sockets, when we call accept, this function will not exit until somebody tries to connect because we're going to call this accept function and then the code will just sit here and wait until somebody connects. And once they connect, then we'll go to the next line of code and go through here. Let's go to our server. We're going to set this up. So if socket.accept, well, I guess we need to have a uh, socket for our new connection. New connect. If we accept that new connection successfully, then what we're going to do is we're going to actually close the connection. Before we do that, we will print out new connection accepted. Otherwise, we failed, failed to accept new connection. If we start our server now, you should see it seems like nothing is happening because our server is listening on port 4790 and attempting to accept a new connection, but nobody is connecting. So in our client, we need to add in code to connect. So let's go back to our socket header. We're going to create a connect function. The connect function will return a P result and it will take in and IP endpoint. Generate this definition. So to connect, we are of course going to call a function called connect where we pass in the handle that we want to use and then we pass in the socket address information. Just like how when we uh, bind it to a socket and we needed that information, we need that when we connect. So let's go ahead and get that. we we'll do soc adder in since we're just using internet protocol version four, we're just going to implement that. When we go down to support version six later, we'll make all those changes necessary. So we'll pass in the address there, and then the size of sock adder in. And then we need to cast this to sock adder. If we take a look at the documentation, if no error occurs, connect will return zero, otherwise we'll get socket error. What we'll do is we'll say if result is not zero, otherwise we will just return back success. So let's go into our client and what we will do is after we create our socket, we will attempt to connect. We'll do if socket.connect and we'll pass in our IP endpoint, which I'm just going to put in my local host and then on port 4790. Check that it was equal to success. And if it was, 
There we go. Successfully connected to server, else failed to connect to server. Before we test this, let's go to the bottom of the client and add in a system pause here to keep it from just closing instantly. And let's rebuild everything. So what we'll do is we will right click on the server and go to debug, start new instance. And then in the solution explorer, we will right click on the client and go to debug, start new instance. And you'll see on the server, what we had got was um, successfully listening, new connection accepted. And then it, after we accepted that connection, we went down here, closed the socket, went down here, shut down the OneSock API, and then we hit that pause. On the client, we successfully connected the server. And then of course, after we connected, we went down here, we closed the socket, and we went down here, we shut down OneSock, and then we hit that system pause. In the next video, we will look at getting the connection info when accepting a new connection, such as the IP and port that they connected on.